Hello everyone, welcome back. Today, I'll be covering septic arthritis in adult, a part 2 video, especially regarding the management. In this video, I will cover the role of imaging in septic arthritis of the knee, the x-ray, the MRI, PET and CT scan function, the treatment of septic arthritis, including what is the appropriate antibiotic usage, and how do you do an open arthrotomy joint washout of the knee. Now, let's get started. The role of imaging in septic arthritis knee. Radiograph should be the first imaging study performed, although they are frequently negative in septic arthritis and early osteomyelitis. Ultrasound is useful for assessing effusion in suspected septic arthritis. If increased fluid is identified, Atrosynthesis can be performed under image guidance. Ultrasound is less useful in the diagnosis of osteomyelitis, although abscesses and periosteal abnormalities may be visualized. Early MRI is useful in the diagnostic process to better classify the location and extent of the disease and plan for surgical intervention. A study showed that community acquired MRSA, CA MRSA, methicillin resistance step aureus, frequently affects the non ossified cartilage of bones, and that on standard MRI sequences, this involvement is frequently missed. However, gadolinium enhancement enables identification of these involved areas and is recommended in suspected cases. Another study reported that MRI is useful in differentiating between kingile kingae osteoarticular infection and those caused by other pathogens. Soft tissue and bone reaction is significantly less in infection caused by kingile kingae. The role of PET or computed tomography CT is limited due to radiation exposure and access to PET or CT is less. Thus, this may limit its practical use. Regarding treatment of septic arthritis, the goal of treatment is to rapidly eradicate the infection and to protect the joint. Ideally, the choice of treatment is based on the result of the Gram's staining. Ideally, the joint aspirate be obtained prior to starting antibiotics. The choice of antibiotics is based on National Antimicrobial Guideline 2019, Malaysia. This figure shows the antibiotic guideline. For acute monoarticular, in person who do not have any risk factors for STD, so the common organism is usually Staphylococcus or Streptococcus. The preferred antibiotic is cloxacillin 2 gram intravenously for every 4 to 6 hours. The duration for parenteral therapy for 2 to 4 weeks. That means again, minimum is for 2 weeks. The oral therapy is to complete a total of 4 to 6 weeks. Alternatively, in patients who has an allergy, we can use kefazolin 2 gram intravenously every 6 or 8 hourly. 
or clindamycin 600mg intravenously every 6 hour lead followed by oral therapy for the same dose. Or vancomycin 15 to 20 mg per kg intravenously every 8 to 12 hour list, not exceeding 2 gram per dose. The duration again, the parenteral therapy is minimum 2 weeks up to 4 weeks for oral therapy to complete a total 4 to 6 weeks. For acute monocular, monoarticular in a patient or person who have a risk factor for STD. So the common organism is usually gonorrhea, streptococcus, staphylococcus or gram-negative bacilli. The preferred antibiotic is ceftriazone, 2 gram intravenously for 1 to 2 weeks plus azithromycin, 1 gram per orally stat or doxycycline 100 mg per orally for 12 hourly for 7 days. Alternatively, you can give cefotaxim 2 gram intravenously every 8 hourly for 1 to 2 weeks plus azithromycin 1 gram orally stat or doxycycline 100 mg orally at 12 hourly for 7 days. For polyarticular gonorrhea, the preferred treatment is ceftriazone 2 gram intravenously for 24 hours for 7 days. The drainage, debridement and washout of infected joint is important to limit further damage. If suspected or confirmed, Metacillin resistant step aureus, consider loading dose 25 to 30 mg per kg for critically ill or septic patient to achieve faster steady state. The decreasing of bacterial load. Mechanical removal of bacteria from a septic joint is typically performed by open or arthroscopic means. So, how to perform an open autotomy joint washout of the knee? Among the favorite viable questions, after correct indication and consent taken, patient will be under general anesthesia or spinal anesthesia or epidural anesthesia. The position, supine, with sandbag underneath the hip. First, the skin is clean and draped. We start off with an incision, midline longitudinal incision extending from 5 cm above the superior pole of patella to the tibial tuberosity. A medial parapatella atotomy is chosen. The incision is deepened through subcutaneous and deep fascia. Develop a medial flap to expose the quadricep tendon, medial border of patella and medial border of ligamentum patella. This figure shows the parapatella incision. Develop the media flap to expose the quadricep tendons, the media border of patella and media border of ligamentum patella. Incise the medial aspect of the knee joint capsule longitudinally and adjacent to the patella. Retract the patella laterally for a better view. Inspect the knee joint. How is the condition of the synovium, the condal surfaces and the patella? Debride all the infected tissue and dead tissue. Wash with at least 3 liters of saline. 
remember to flex the knee joint so that the posterior part of the knee is washed properly too. Depends. If first autotomy joint wash out, I will not put a drain. If the patient undergoes sec second knee joint wash out, I will put a drain. And finally, the wound is closed layer by layer. This image shows the media patella patella approach. And to see the knee joint properly, I will avert the patella to see the knee joint. Yay! We have reached to the end of this video. I hope it helps. See you in the next one. Take care and bye.